Bitcoin, the world's first cryptocurrency, was introduced to the world in 2009 with the promise of providing a decentralized, secure and accessible digital currency that could be used for everyday transactions. However, more than a decade later, Bitcoin still has not been widely accepted as a means of payment and many people are still searching for a compelling use case that justifies its high price. One of the most commonly cited use cases for Bitcoin is that it can provide financial services to the unbanked populations in developing countries. However, this argument is flawed as it fails to address the root cause of why people in these countries do not have bank accounts in the first place. The argument is that by using Bitcoin, people who do not have access to traditional banking services can still send and receive money, pay bills and engage in other financial transactions. While this may seem like a noble goal, it overlooks the fact that the unbanked population in these countries do not have bank accounts because they do not make enough money to justify the costs and fees associated with traditional banking services. In many third world countries, people do not have access to financial services because they live in poverty. They lack the income and resources necessary to maintain a bank account and participate in the traditional financial system. In these countries, people often rely on one person in the family to have a bank account and manage their finances. This person will share the resources with the rest of the family as needed. In this context, Bitcoin is not a solution to the problem of financial exclusion, as it does not address the root cause of why people do not have access to financial services in the first place. The issue is not lack of access to banking services, but rather lack of income. Another issue with the argument that Bitcoin can provide financial services to the unbanked population is that it overlooks the fact that Bitcoin itself is not widely accepted as a means of payment. Despite being in existence for more than a decade, Bitcoin is still not widely accepted by merchants and retailers as a form of payment. This means that even if people in developing countries were able to obtain Bitcoin, they would still struggle to use it to purchase goods and services. This lack of acceptance is a major obstacle to Bitcoin becoming a viable alternative to traditional banking services. Bitcoin makes it easier for scammers to take advantage of vulnerable populations. For example, individuals may be targeted by phishing scams or malware that steals their private keys, allowing scammers to steal their cryptocurrency holdings. All transactions made on the Bitcoin blockchains are irreversible, so if you send your coins to the wrong address or get scammed, they are gone forever. There is no central authority you can ask to initiate a chargeback to retrieve your money. This lack of oversight and regulation makes it easier for scammers and fraudsters to prey on unsuspecting individuals, particularly those who are less financially savvy and technologically literate. The idea that Bitcoin can provide financial services to the unbanked population ignores the fact that there are other solutions that are better suited for this task. For example, some organizations have been working to provide mobile banking services to people in developing countries. These services allow people to access financial services using their mobile phones, which are much more widely available than traditional banking services. m is a mobile phone-based money transfer service, payments and microfinancing service, launched in 2007 by Vodafone and Safaricom, the largest mobile network operator in Kenya. The M stands for mobile and PISA is Swahili for money. m allows users to deposit, withdraw, transfer money, pay for goods and services, access credit and savings, all with a mobile device. m spread quickly and by 2010 had become the most successful mobile phone-based financial service in the developing world. It has since expanded to Tanzania, Mozambique, DRC, Lesotho, Ghana, Egypt, Afghanistan and South Africa. The service has been praised for giving millions of people access to the formal financial system and for reducing crime in largely cash-based societies. This approach has been successful in many countries because it provides a solution that is affordable, accessible and easy to use. When considering affordability and ease of use, Bitcoin falls short in several ways. Despite its goal to be digital currency, used for everyday transactions, it is not scalable, which means that transaction fees can soar as high as $50 per transaction, making it much worse than fees charged by traditional institutions. In many developing countries, people rely on small transactions to purchase food, pay bills, and conduct other essential activities. The high transaction fees and slow transaction times associated with Bitcoin make it unfeasible for such use cases. Additionally, to convert your local currency into Bitcoin, users need access to a bank account so they can use a fiat on-ramp. Additionally, users may have to pay up to 4% in fees when buying cryptocurrency. 
Many people find Bitcoin challenging to navigate as it requires technical know-how and the lack of user-friendly infrastructure and educational resources serves as a barrier to adoption for potential users. The tax implications of using Bitcoin as a currency can make it less attractive to users. When you use Bitcoin to purchase goods or services, the transaction is subject to capital gains tax if you dispose of the Bitcoin at a higher value than when you acquired it. This means that you would need to report the gain or loss on your tax return and pay any applicable taxes. This tax treatment can make Bitcoin less attractive as a currency for several reasons. First, it can add complexity and administrative burden for users who need to track their Bitcoin transactions for tax purposes. Second, it can discourage people from using Bitcoin for small transactions, as the tax implications may not be worth the effort for smaller amounts. This can reduce the currency's utility as a means of exchange. Finding a way to send and receive money is not the only challenge facing the people of developing countries. Access to credit is an essential aspect of financial inclusion and development in any country. In Africa, however, one of the most significant challenges facing people is their inability to access cheap or affordable credit. This problem affects individuals, small businesses, and even larger corporations, resulting in a wide range of consequences. The consequences of the lack of affordable credit in Africa are widespread and far-reaching. Without access to credit, people and businesses struggle to invest in their future, expand their operations, or purchase the necessary equipment to increase productivity. This lack of investment leads to reduced economic growth and development, perpetuating the cycle of poverty. In addition, the lack of affordable credit makes it difficult for people to finance education, healthcare, and other essential services. This lack of access to critical services exacerbates poverty, further marginalizing already disadvantaged communities. Banks do more than just store people's money and process payments. They also provide loans to people who need it. Banks take funds that are unused by savers and turn them into funds society can use. How is a person in Africa supposed to get a loan to buy a house using Bitcoin? Another important question is, would you want to take out a Bitcoin loan knowing how volatile it can be? Kiva is a non-profit organization that allows people to lend money to entrepreneurs and small businesses in developing countries. Kiva has partnerships with microfinance institutions in over 80 countries and has facilitated over $1.5 billion in loans. Kiva has been successful in promoting financial inclusion and has helped to create jobs and improve living conditions in developing countries. Promuja is a non-profit organization that provides microfinance and other services to women in Latin America. It has partnerships with governments, private companies, and other organizations to help promote financial inclusion and empower women. Promuja has been successful in helping women start and grow their businesses and has provided over $3 billion in loans to women in Latin America. Partnerships between governments, private companies, and non-profit organizations can be a powerful way to promote financial inclusion and development in developing countries. These partnerships can leverage the strengths of each sector and create sustainable solutions that benefit local communities. In an economy where Bitcoin is the main form of legal tender, the limited supply of Bitcoin could potentially lead to a decrease in the amount of available credit, which could make it harder for businesses and individuals to obtain loans and finance investments. This, in turn, could lead to decreased economic growth and lower levels of debt. The adoption of Bitcoin as legal tender will cause debt deflation. Debt deflation refers to a situation where a decrease in the overall price level leads to an increase in the real value of debt, which can cause economic problems. As a result, it can become harder for borrowers to pay their debts, since money is valued more highly during deflationary periods. This is the future that awaits the economy of El Salvador as they became the first developing country to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender. The adoption of Bitcoin as legal tender will lead to a decrease in the velocity of money. Velocity of money refers to the speed at which money circulates in the economy. When people hold on to Bitcoin, they may be less likely to spend it compared to traditional currencies. A decrease in the velocity of money can lead to a decrease in the overall level of economic activity, which can cause deflationary pressures. In conclusion, the argument that Bitcoin can provide financial services to the unbanked population in third world countries is flawed. It overlooks the root cause of financial exclusion in these countries, which is poverty and lack of income. It also ignores the fact that Bitcoin itself is not a widely accepted means of payment. Bitcoin makes it simpler for con artists to prey on vulnerable people. There are other solutions such as Mpesa and Kiva, 
that are better suited for financial inclusion. Bitcoin falls short when it comes to affordability and ease of use. The tax implications of using Bitcoin reduce its utility as a means of exchange. An economy that adopts Bitcoin as legal tender risks facing debt deflation. It looks like the search for a compelling use case that justifies Bitcoin's high price will continue.